Hey there, everybody. Robert Hoffman, a.k.a. Rock Hoff here again. Once, once again to uh, put in the, I forget what this is, I think this is the fourth vlog installment of my 20% project. Um, once again, my 20% project is I am taking various Flash video games from around the internet and analyzing them for their educational value and proving how Flash games are not exactly a waste of time, but they also have educational value. Also, in honor of when I'm recording this, it is the Monday after the new season of uh, season of Game of Thrones coming on, so I have to bring out the House Stark hat. So, House Stark, unfortunately, what happened? But whatever, you know, you guys are you guys are great. But anyways, moving on beyond that. Um, in this new installment, my uh, professor did indeed want me to have a new set of questions answered, so I'm going to go ahead and pull that up. Uh, and I'm going to answer those quickly right away, and then I can get into the fun stuff. Um, so let's see here. First off, my professor is asking, do I use social media networks, blah, 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 to learn project, uh, to, you know, get my data? And most of it, I will admit, I'm getting from the class. I am, you know, I'm watching the videos uh, that uh, my professor in this class is assigning me. Uh, and I apologize for not saying beforehand, my, the class this is for, sorry, doing other things, the class this is for is for UGA's EDA 2000 course. Uh, so, but she's, uh, she has us watch and read various articles and uh, watch various new uh, <clears throat> videos. And, um, you know, from there, I've kind of learned several of them have applied to my project. In fact, this latest one she's had us do was uh, to uh, read about augmented reality apps and how they and, and they say how they uh, can be used for educational purposes as well, which honestly isn't that much different from this topic, because um, flash games and uh, flash games and uh, apps all ultimately are the same thing. The only thing different is the device you play them on. Flash games are on the computer. Whereas apps are, of course, are on the phone. Uh, but the game, one of the games I'm talking, I'm going to actually uh, talk about later in this video, uh, Urban Rivals. I actually have the app on my phone for that. But it was originally a, it was originally a flash game that ended up becoming an app. Uh, but therefore, you know, whatever you can do with apps also ultimately applies to flash games as well. The only thing is, you don't need a phone; you need a computer instead. Uh, and also, but this thing in, about the apps was honestly about augmented reality, like the uh, first down line on touch on uh, on touchdown on football, uh, where you know it's not actually there in real life. It's you know just the TV people doing that, and ultimately you have it on your phone as well. You know Google Earth, Google Directions. It's like if you do the Street View, you hold it up, and it's like yeah, just go this way about three blocks. You're finally going to get to that restaurant or that bar you're looking for. Uh, and flash games, you know, they're not that interactive with real world, but they have application as well. But again, that's what I've been, you know, stating this whole time in these videos. So if you're interested in that, probably rewatch from maybe the second one. The first one is just an introductory video, but after that, uh, you know, everything actually has some relation to that. Uh, but again, you know, that's basically what I'm going into from here. And another thing is. Uh, that sh the other question that she wants me to answer, yeah, there's only two this time, is what benefits do, I, do you guys get from this, and what do I hope you guys pull out of this series? Well, from this, it's ultimately, I've been staying it the whole time, and I hope to change people's opinions on Flash games, because uh, for most part, I imagine people will, will look at them and see them as a complete, total waste of time. It's a great way of killing 10, 15, 30 minutes if you're in the waiting room for a doctor. If you haven't, can't tell, I was in the doctors recently for allergies that's why my voice is kind of crappy and i apologize for that but i mean i've been i pulled out a couple of flash games on my laptop and actually played them around on them because they're just quick games and you can get them out of the way and when they come out and call your name it's just whoop i'm out okay uh but i mean they're a great way to kill time yes but also in some ways they have educational value and that's what i'm trying to prove from this and i hope you guys get out of this is how that these games that you know everybody most of the time when we create them, we don't really think about how they have this application in the real world, but how they can actually be educated, uh, can apply to the real world, and then ultimately to the classroom. I made that segue in the video, in the third video to the fourth video, so watch that and you can uh, get into that. 
So after all that business out of the way, I actually have, uh, finally I'm going to analyze one of the games I've been promising, and that's Urban Rivals. Urban Rivals uh, is a card, is a trading card game online that is a flash game. It's uh, literally urbanrivals.com. You can go on, check it out. It's, uh, it's a game. You have to get a profile. You have to play. But ultimately what you do is you have this deck of characters, and you're only allowed to put it, uh, sorry, you're only allowed to have a, a deck of eight people. Well, these eight people each individually have their own ability, and then when they're paired with somebody who are in their own clan, uh, in their own clan, which, you know, the characters, I think there's over like 150, but they each belong to a set of, I think they're up to 15 clans now. Uh, no, actually it's a lot less clans. It's either that or the same amount of clans, more characters. But anyways, clans are huge, but the main thing is how are you going to compile this deck together where you can get this clan ability so that you can, you know, probability, you're going to have most likely four and four. You know, you're going to have four people from one clan and four people from another. That way statistics works out in your ways that you're going to get two and two, at least. Or, yeah, two and two. And that way you get both clan bonuses and you get all the abilities and you get like a, and you get some things. And the clan abilities can range anything from, uh, and this, the ones I'm familiar with, the one I'm most familiar with, and the one that I play with the most is called Jungo, and they're all animals and da-da-da. But their clan ability is for every... Uh, for every damage you inflict, you get two life back. Uh, and that's a healing and defensive bonus kind of thing. Uh, whereas other clans are, yeah, your attack is raised up by 16 kind of thing. It's up, uh, it's stuff basically like that. And, you know, you're going to have to figure out how you're going to mix your clans together. How, what clans do you want and which characters' abilities do you want to have? And all that, you know, that's the game, like, advanced stuff. Uh, if you play it for 15 minutes, you'll get the basic gist of it. It's not that hard. It's <clears throat> it's all uh, stuff varying on that. Uh, but the other premise of the game is, you know, you have your characters, you have their base attack, and you can multiply their attack uh, by the amount of pills that you have. And, you know, you have a set amount of pills every, every time. And uh, they inflict a certain amount of damage, and your character has a certain amount of attack. And, you know, once again, you're trying to build it up. And also in this, you don't play against AI most of the time. You're, if you want to get the big bucks and, you know, get better characters, ultimately, from those big bucks, you want to play against the real people. And therefore, there comes in psychology. Therefore, you know, because you got to guess the other person's move. you got to think what they're thinking, try and trick them. It's poker. And, but, I mean, poker people always talk about the psychology. They wear sun. I had a friend who was big in poker, and he said that they wear sunglasses, non-reflective. That way, you can't see their eyes and you can't see their cards, because everybody has a give, and most of the time it's in the eyes. So that's why the sunglasses come out, so that that psychological thing does not give you away. Yeah, and that's why poker's on ESPN, I guess. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, it's psychology in that you're trying to trick the other person and not have the other person trick you. You're trying to guess. Either way, what's going to happen, it's Sun Tzu's Art of War all over again. But Sun Tzu's Art of War is studied in uh, West Point today still. It's all, you know, psychology and all that stuff. That, you know, it can be applied to the classroom uh, in that sense. But also, if you hadn't figured it out from what I was saying at first, there's also a lot of math involved in this game. Because, okay, uh, this is where I get tripped up when I'm playing the game. Because I'm thinking, okay, I have a character of attack 8. He has a character of attack 4 four who gets plus 16 so he's going to end up with 20 at the end okay so i need to get up to three pills and that's assuming that he's not going to put any more pills on him and then you have to do math really quickly your turns are timed i think by a minute so you have to do math very very quickly you have to be able to do that psychology very quickly and it's basically speed how quickly can you do all this stuff in your mind if you're not good at that stuff you're not going to do well in this game at all and you know, pretty much, it's like tossing the infant into the water and to teach him how to swim. Yeah, you're probably going to traumatize them for a little bit, but eventually they will learn. It, and not the child thing. The child thing's more trauma, I will admit. But uh, it, you're, if you get tossed into the fold like that, you're eventually going to learn. The good people in that game are ranked, uh, like, level 80. They're the ones who can sit there, and they have their turns done 
in 30 minutes, uh, not 30 minutes, 30 seconds, because they've had enough time to think what the other person's going to do. They figured you out by now. They're going to know how many pills they want to play, and they know how many pills you're going to play, and they've all done, they've done all this math, all this psychology in their head already. So basically, that's what this game can teach. You know, you can pull it up in a psych class and ha see if you can't find some way to get your people to play against each other. That's one way of doing it. Uh, and, you know, be like, okay, who was an aggressive, who played against an aggressive person? I did. Who played against a very defensive person who waited his time out? I did. How could you counter that next? You know, psychology. And then you can go into, you know, the Freudian stuff and all that, all that jazz uh, on your own time. But, but, you know, it's a good segue into it. I'm trying to figure out how people think. Uh, and, you know, the math courses, of course, it's just speed math. It's about, in third grade when I was doing it, uh, we had to, we had the times tables, and you were timed how many you can do in a minute, and if you didn't do 100, you were screwed. Uh, I had a lot of trouble with that. I ended up having to go home with an egg timer and have my mom pass out hand, or give me give me multiplication tables nonstop. Uh, but, I mean, it's I'm thankful for that now because when I play this game, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> you get – it hits you in the face very quickly, and it, it gets rough. Uh, but also, like I said in the beginning, too, it's statistics because – if you have two people from one clan and six people from another, you're most likely going to get either one clan bonus or very, very, very rarely. I don't, I'm not good at stats, so I can't do it right now, but I know 50-50 is better than that, whatever that is. I think that's 75-25, uh, that you're actually going to get both bonuses. But there's also the, uh, and this is where I'm wrong, because there's also the option you're going to get three of one, but you're not going to get the other one at all. You're just going to have a random character who has their strict ability, but that other ability is blacked out. It, it's just rough. And so you got to stick with your statistics as well, because you only get four characters to play with, and you can't trade them out. You're kind of stuck with what you get. So you got to hope that your characters that come out are in the right are right. <coughs> and that's ultimately all it is. So urban rivals. Uh, just to re recap. Uh, just uh, sorry, just to recap on what I'm saying, it's educational value. Is uh, Urban Rivals is a speed version of basically learn to do your timetables, do your subtraction, do your addition, uh, and it's like psychological because you got to guess what the other person's going to do, and you got to get used to the different kind of strategies. And then it also has statistics in it because you, it, when creating your deck, you have to learn the probability that you're going to get the cards you want. Because you can't just stack it with those car with all the good cards and then hope that you hope that you get them, because you're gonna ultimately end up not having them. You're gonna get that little card that you put in there just you know so your deck limit didn't go over. That's pretty much all that is. Uh, but also in the Neopets, going back to the Neopets thing in the other video, if you hadn't heard me reference it already, uh, there's an economy in the game, and of course that's basic math. You know you gotta figure out how many times you got to, how many games you got to play, how well you got to do, what you're going to do to get this, all this money. Uh, I only have like two and a half minutes left, so I can't go into all the details of this, but there's an economy and there's various different ways to earn money. And there's also a market. It's you now market. Oh my God, that's economy right there too. Like you can't, you can supply and demand. If there's a, you got a high card and it's selling for a high price. Okay. Yeah. You can, you can sell it for a lot of money, but if you got a little basic card, and, you know, it's selling for, like, two things. You're not going to be able to get away with selling it for 500 things. It's supply and demand. If you put it out there for too high, the customer is not going to want it. It's That's basic economy. And uh, I wish I had more time to go into that. I might be. I might try and go into it in the next reflection uh, when I get the chance to post, hopefully when all this is cleared up. Uh, but, yeah, I'll definitely revisit Urban Rivals because there's a lot more to it than even I was thinking about before I posted this video. So I apologize that I'm not going to get into it, but it's just part one of um, Urban Rivals Analyzation. So before I run out of time and have to rush things, uh, I'm going to go ahead and sign off. So stay tuned for part two of Urban Rivals, um, of the Urban Rivals thing. Uh, analysis, nothing. Analysis. So if you have any games you want me to check out, please let me know in the comments here on YouTube or the comments on my blog, whatever you're watching this on. I'll be more than happy to walk look at them and try and analyze them if I have time. Uh, so any advice, any help, and any articles you can point me to would be greatly appreciated. So uh, once again, this is Robert, Robert Hoffman, a.k.a. Rock Hoff, signing off.